Welcome back. Let's begin practicing on reactive processes, doing material balances with just a single reaction. Now, whenever reactions are involved, be sure that your balances are with moles and not mass. You can use mass, but it is very treacherous, and I do not recommend it. Um, we're still going to use the same basic equations for steady state or batch, input plus generation equals output plus consumption. And this is equivalent to, for a single reaction, the number of moles in, or at the end, is equal to the number of moles at the beginning plus beta, which is the stoichiometric coefficient plus the sine, times squiggle. Now, mass is conserved, moles of molecules are not. And so therefore, the number of moles total from the beginning to the end may change unless our reaction is equimolar. Now, moles of atoms are conserved. So sometimes we will also do an atom balance. And in that case, the number of atoms at the beginning or at the end it will be the same or in and out for a system with flow. So we'll come back to this a little bit more. I'm going to show you some problems, and I'll work them sometimes multiple ways to show you atom balances and molecule balances. If I use the definition of squiggle, that is equivalent to a molecule balance. So if I'm going to be able to analyze processes, I have to be able to do it with everything that we've been doing so far. So might be multiple units, there might be recycle, there might be bypass, and now we'll frequently find that we have a purge stream, which is a waste stream that leaves. Uh, whenever I have a recycle, I may need a purge stream if I cannot do a steady state balance. <clears throat> so we're doing a recycle whenever we have reactors so that any unreacted feed material can be sent back to the reactor to try again, okay? So we're going to frequently with reactions have this recycle stream. If I end up with an unacceptable buildup of certain materials, then I will need to add a purge stream, which is going to be this little extra exit stream up here. So in this particular case, this isn't any, we're not going to analyze this in particular, but I have some hydrogen and methane being fed into a mixture where they're mixed with nitrogen and toluene. And then that is going to be, this mixture plus the recycle stream is going to be fed into the reactor. From the reactor, it's going to go to a separator. Some of the separator is going to be our desired product, benzene, toluene, and biphenyl. And that will then go to a second separator to create a pure benzene stream and a toluene and biphen biphenyl stream. The rest of the stuff was my unreacted feed materials, and those are going to be recycled back to be fed into the reactor again. Now, unfortunately, this will end up building up, and so therefore we have to add a purge stream. But this is going to be like a split point right here. One of the things that's a little bit different when we talk about reactions is that fractional conversion. Fractional conversion is going to be different if I look at just the reactor or if I look at my overall process. So in the overall process, the conversion is usually going to be very high. When I teach design classes, I tell them to keep working at it until they get an overall conversion for their process of typically like 99%. We want really large overall conversion. So this is going to be of the fresh feed that comes in and what leaves the system as product or purge, um, the part that didn't react, or that did react, okay, we're subtracting off what didn't react, and then divide by how much came in fresh. So this is the definition of fractional conversion, the amount reacted over the amount that was fed, for the overall process. The single pass conversion may be very low. 
depending on, this is going to depend largely on the equilibrium, the reaction rate, some other things. The single pass conversion is going to look at how much reacts just in the reactor based on how much was fed just to the reactor. So the moles of A in the reactor feed minus the moles of A in the reactor product divide, divided by the moles of A in the reactor feed. So I'm looking just right at the reactor or at the overall system. Single pass conversion may be very low. Overall conversion ideally will be a very large number, close to one. So let's look at an example here. Now this is based on a problem that's in the textbook, but I have carbon monoxide plus two hydrogens makes methanol, CH3OH. I have fresh feed in stream one that is combined with a recycle stream, stream six, to be fed to a reactor. This feed is stream two. Out of the reactor is stream three, which is fed to a separator. Streams four and five leave there. Stream five is part of the recycle, but there is a purge stream, stream seven, that's also necessary. The compositions of each of these streams are defined in the table shown below. So the fresh feed is 32% carbon monoxide, 64% hydrogen, 4% nitrogen, and no methanol. And there's 100 moles per hour. 100 moles per hour will be my basis for this problem. I know that in stream two, I cannot allow more than 13% nitrogen into the reactor, so therefore, that composition is limited at 13%. Stream four, this product is going to be pure methanol. It will contain none of the reactants or the nitrogen. So what we wanna do, oh, and I forgot I have one other thing here. The recycle, they say, is 500 uh, moles per hour. We wanna know what's the production rate of methanol per mole of feed. So that's going to be my stream four. What's the ratio of purge to fresh feed? So it's going to be F7 to, compared to F1. What's the composition of the purge gas? So that's going to be this composition of stream 7. And what are the overall and single pass conversions of carbon monoxide? All right, so if I use those equations plus the sum of x equation, xn5 plus xc5 plus xh5 equals 1, then what I find is that F2 equals 600 moles per hour. F7 equals 27 moles per hour. Uh, F4 equals 24.3 moles per hour. XH5 equals 0 0.568. XN5 equals 0 0.148. And XC5 equals 0 0.284. All right. Um, oh, and I guess I can use those to figure out what XC2 and XH2. Okay. So now to finish this, I still need to do some of the other balances, so I don't quite have everything known yet. But I'll do the split point. At the split point, F5 equals F6 plus F7. So F5 is 527 moles per hour. And I can do the separator. And the separator, well, I find that F3 is 551.3 moles per hour. And I get the compositions coming out of 
the separator um, Let me write them over here. XC3 equals 0 0.271. XH3 equals 0 0.543. XM3 equals 0 0.141. So what's the production rate of methanol per mole of feed? Well, that's going to be F4 over F1. F4 over F1 is 24.3 over 100 is 0 0.243 moles of methanol per mole of feed. What's the ratio of the purge to the fresh feed? That's F7 over F1, which is 27 over 100 equals 0 0.27 moles purged per mole fed. What's the composition of the purge gas? Well, that's just going to be the compositions found here. 15% N2, 57% H2, 28% CO. And now, what are the overall and single pass conversions of CO? All right, so the overall conversion, I look at how much did not react, so of the CO. So I'm going to look at the CO in streams 4 and 7 compared to stream 1, and that's how much did not react. So 32 minus... 0 0.284 times 27 divided by how much came in, 32. The overall conversion is 0 0.76. So 76% conversion. Single pass in that case I'm looking only right here at streams 2 and 3. So that is 0 0.29 times 600 minus 0 0.284 times 527 all over 0 0.29 times 600 14 percent conversion so the single pass conversion is 14 percent the overall conversion is 76 percent so this completes this example. Take a little time to really look at this and study this before moving on to the next section, which is going to be on multiple reactions.